do it or something. I can't remember what the the details were in that case, but one kid did it, you know. Other kids have done it. Uh, but then, of course, there's the whole bullying aspect, right? We've got bullying all over the Internet. It's just everywhere. And, well, of course, where is it all coming from? Well, it's coming from the tools that we use online to communicate with one another, our, our social media. So, again, the Facebook, the Pinterest, the Twitters, the LinkedIn's, all that stuff. Well, now it seems that, uh, you know, they've kind of combined teen suicides and social media with this film about six high schoolers whose weeknight turns bloody when they're victimized by a classmate who apparently killed herself a year later. Or, no, earlier. Yes, thank you. I'm awake. Well, Unfriended opens in theaters Friday veers from everything that came before it as the story is told entirely on a computer desktop screen, unfolding over Skype calls, Facebook status updates, and instant messages. So so this is another, you know, filmmaking breakthrough. You know, absolutely. They, they don't even have a set. No, it's just these idiots on the screen. <laughs> Must have been pretty cheap to make. But no doubt, when it releases, we'll look it up on IMDb here and it'll have some $200 million price tag, I'm sure. But that is the sum in total entirety of the, the film is all on this computer desktop screen. Yes. Quote, I want to see movies about my virtual life, says the filmmaker. I'm sure I'm not alone. Also, the producer via a Skype call from Rome where he's filming the remake of Ben-Hur. Quote, he says, why should I be making movies about some physical world where I'm not really spending so much time, he says. And if you stop and think about that for a minute, whoa, that's kind of scary. How much time are we spending? Well, recent studies have shown that the average person is spending anywhere from 6 to 12 hours a day in some form or another on social media. That's a little scary. I was a little shocked when I, I read that. Well, movies such as The Blair Witch Project from 1999 and, of course, Paranormal Activity in 2009 were popular game changers in the found footage space. And Unfriended similarly proves that the scariest movies reflect our existence in the most real ways possible. This from the executive producer of the film, Jason Bloom. Everybody in Hollywood wasn't always accepting a lot of industry folks weren't interested in the concept because, quote, they were afraid of it, end quote, says writer-producer Nelson Graves. Big ideas should always be rejected first or they're not actually big ideas. Well, Bloom's Bloomhouse Productions Company has championed many micro-budget horror hits, including Paranormal Activity, The Purge, and Insidious franchises and was integral in partnering, partnering with Universal to release Unfriended. Bloom says he was a fan of the, from the start because the film hits close to home and gets under your skin more because it turns social media in on itself. Yet the goal wasn't just to tell a digital story for the filmmakers. Unfriended is about people and how they live their lives in 2015. Well, Facebook friends aren't just a sub-form of friends, Grieve says, for kids these days and for many adults. That's what friendship is now. The rules have changed, but cinema has been a little bit slow in catching up with how different our lives actually are. Most people spend 5, 6, 10, even 12 hours at a computer every single day, and all that time is them accumulating stories that we haven't found a way to appreciate together yet. Well, I'm not really sure what he's saying with that statement either. You know, I, I don't know about you all, but the stuff I see out on, on you know, my Facebook feed, eh, how are you going to make a movie out of that? Really? <laughs> yeah, how, how do you do that? I just don't know. I I'd really, <laughs> I don't know. You know, well, well here's an example. You know, you... You go down your, your home page on Facebook there, and, of course, it gives you the feeds of all your friends. All right. Well, I don't know. My buddy Kenneth Wascom, who's a big gamer, 
He says, Goku pre-SS 180,000. This is the point where he was actually like right on the cusp of form for fully forming to an SS. Well, un unless you're a gamer and I think specifically involved in the game he's talking about, you don't know what the hell that is. What the hell is that? He can't make a movie out of that. Sorry. And the next... The very next thing is a sponsored ad from Fiverr.com. Yes, make yourself a cartoon. <laughs> really? Okay, so let's think. put our screenwriting caps on here and think about that for a minute. Okay, well, yeah, we could have this this horror movie where where you send in your picture of yourself as a cartoon and, and they don't you, you pay your five bucks, but they don't send you a picture of you as a cartoon. The next thing you know, there's a knock at the door and you open the door and it's you as a cartoon. Yeah, let's go with that. Really? You know, I, I understand Hollywood is, is just about out of ideas, which is why, you know, especially this week, um, Kate and I and the HTLA folks here, we've been working with, uh, God, uh, well, The Road Within, that's a film that's being uh, released on Friday as well. Uh, it looks to be pretty good, actually. Uh, and uh, so we were meeting with the, the, the stars and the director of that film today for some interviews for Tomorrow's Straight Talk. And that, 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 that movie actually looks good. I, I was all right. And then, of course, on Monday, we uh, met with Jeremy Irvine there in that interview for Straight Talk on Monday, uh, which was for Beyond the Reach, Michael Douglas's new film, which is also coming out uh, the 17th this Friday. And, and those films, you know, we, we got the press kit and everything else beforehand, of course. So, you know, we saw the films, we saw the trailers, we saw the, you know, all the Q&As and stuff by the uh, all the folks involved with it. And, and uh, we, all, we, we knew that stuff going in. So we got a pretty good idea what this movie is going to be like. <clears throat> I, I, I got to say, I'm really glad we didn't get to uh, <laughs> to do the Unfriended movie. Well, because there's nobody who's anybody that's in it, of course. They're all pretty much no names. And, uh, yeah, it's – I mean, just think about the premise for a second. <laughs> you know, the movie opens on this desktop computer screen and two hours later the movie closes on the same desktop computer screen. But the world has changed forever through the epic story told through Skype. Now, I don't know – yeah, you should be able to go and, and uh, look for the trailer for this on YouTube. And I, I would suggest, you know, maybe during this first commercial break coming up, head on over to YouTube and just put Unfriended in there and, and see the uh, the trailer there. Um, I saw it and, uh, well, completely wasn't impressed, not the least little bit. And it, it, it's, it, it, it was kind of reminiscent of those old, you know, early 1980s, maybe late 70s horror movies, you know, where the – the phone rings and she answers it and you're like, don't go in the house. <laughs> well, wait, ass, I'm already in the house. I'm on the phone with you. Who the hell are you? You know what I mean? And then it's just like two hours of running around. Don't go up the stairs. She goes up the stairs. Uh, don't open the door. They open the door. You know what I mean? And who, who wants to see that? Especially what are, what are tickets in movie theaters now these days? Like 25 bucks a head just about? <clears throat> I don't know. Well, looking also at the bigger question, because, of course, with everything, there's always a bigger question, right? Mm, well, I have to ask the question, where, where does Hollywood kind of think they're trying to take us here? You know, is this something to, you know, make us afraid to go online? Is that what that is? Or is it... Is it just more that association thing? Well, I, I know all about this because I do this every day. I hit the like button. I'm just like them. I could be next. Well, and don't laugh because you never know. Like, you know, the, the mere inference that somebody killed themselves on YouTube generated 14 million hits in the first 24 hours that it was out there. Right? Don't forget that. I think that video of that girl killing herself and then having it automatically upload to YouTube, that had like 63 million views in 48 hours. So, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Well, the one thing I do know is it's time for me to take that first commercial break, so I'm going to go do that. And, uh, again... 
don't normally do this on Crash Talk, but we're opening up the phone lines. Uh, 914-873-1692 is the number. That's 914-873-1NYC. Yes. You know, isn't that cute for HTLA Radio 1? Yeah, I thought that was kind of cute too. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go for our first commercial break. When we come back, uh, we'll be taking your calls, talking about this, and uh, be interesting to hear your take, really, to be totally honest. Uh, yeah, so we'll be back in two, gang. And you are listening to Crash Talk with Christopher John Taylor, a.k.a. Crash Jesus, on HTLA Radio 1, New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions? Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended ground and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it. Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons, always fresh, always great tasting coffee. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonneville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow. That's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Miramichi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, Whitehorse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been, I've been everywhere, everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the prairies, bear, man. I breathed the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my share, man. I've been everywhere, man. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials! You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do! <laughs> power! Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. When we arrived at our 
hotel in New York. The porter was so incredibly...